For this video, we're going to work on uh, some basic introductory level Junfan JKD uh, hand trapping, hand immobilization attack if you prefer, um, and it's, you could also consider this Wing Chun. Uh, you're going to see elements of this style of trapping in a lot of different arts, but primarily at least where you see it here at MKG Detroit is in, in our trapping class and through the Jeet Kune Do program. Uh, the terminology that we'll use for this is going to come from the Junfan Jeet Kune Do curriculum as well. So we're going to look at Lap Sao, which is, a, well first Pak Sao, which is a trapping or slapping hand. Lots of a pulling motion, and we're going to kind of look at some variations on these. Each one will be again fairly introductory level. Our my objective here is to show you option A, option B, and then how to bridge those things together into a single movement. One because you might come across them in that way, but really more two for the attributes that it helps you to develop, which might be first and foremost things like coordination. Um, line familiarization and awareness of, of distance and uh, the sensitivity of what happens when your arm is, is moved or your body is manipulated into one position versus another and how to generate an economical response from that position. So Roy's here, he's in town this week, it was awesome, so we get to fill with Roy. So uh, we're gonna start from the reference point just so that if you're from a different system or whatever, you have a jumping off point. So we're here, boom, pox out, trap and hit. We're back of the wrist to the back of the wrist this way, and we're occupying the center line where our hands come together. Essentially, it's as simple as slap this towards his body. Your mechanics are not entirely unlike throwing a cross. That's how we do box up. We're used to trying to really put that thing into the body. I want this whole structure to collapse, and if I put it in just right, it might even take a little bit of his wind from him. So I trap and hit, and he parries across. Using no thumb, thumb is on top, and he's pushing this across the center line. I want to feel this punch really get knocked sideways. Not small, but big motion. Almost an over parry. Here. When he over parries, he generates a little bit of momentum in redirecting my hand. When he does, I have to reach up from underneath and pull this out of the way in order to get access to the center line and continue controlling the center. So as I do that, the logical follow-up is to hit on the center. So this is guachoy, which is the back fist here. Pops out, lops out, it's pulling him, guacho is back fist. Okay, so option B is gonna be pop, loy pop. So starting as before at the reference point, I'm gonna trap from the outside, but when he stops this now, he's not pushing it over. I'm not gonna feel this crossover energy that engages my shoulder. I'm just gonna feel it stall abruptly right here on the center. So I'm on the center, I punch through the center, and when he stops it, it just gets stuck there. Right? It's just like it almost runs into a wall. His hand is on my forearm here, right where it tapers uh, wrist, forearm into wrist. So I'm gonna go from arm one to arm two, the first one to the second one. And I'll trap instead of the outside as I did on the first hand, the inside of the second one, and dislodge. So I'm dislodging this one, and I'm dislodging this one. This hand is just heat-seeking missile. It just goes, that thought process is, I don't really care what you put in front of this thing, dude, it's gonna hit you whether you like it or not. On the outside of this arm, and then the inside of this arm. My preference in the way that we do it here at MKG Detroit is that we have one and two. We've got a little bit of connection on this arm. So we don't necessarily want this. I dislodged it, but that arm is free and wild to go anywhere, right? And my hands are pretty busy in this exchange, I need to limit or at least monitor this other arm so that if he goes to use it, I can feel that. I get this feedback. So trap and hit here, trap and hit here. But as I do that loy pock, I allow my elbow to come forward. Okay, so to bridge these ideas together, we're gonna add in what they call third hand response. So when our hands are up like this, we've got first hand, second hand. Our reference point is attached to the first barrier. Then we get a response from the second hand. Well, when we look at Lops of Watchway, for example, if he cycles that hand back into play and I run into it now, it feels like he's got three hands, right? That's the third hand. So I do pox out and lops out, but that recycles onto the center line. So he picks this up here right in the middle, so I trap again. So that would be pox out, lops out, pox out. an easy follow-up to add in that loipak, that second follow-up from the second reference point trap. So we have the first reference point trap, pak, lop, third hand answer, pak, loipak.
right? Option A, option B. A, third hand answer, B. One, two, three, four. watching. I hope that that was useful to you. Um, if you have any questions, as always, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below or you can reach out to us. We'll address them again in the comments there or in a future video. Shin down. Elevate your strength. Elevate your strength. <laughs>